Hello everyone. Welcome back to Belmont's Math and Science Learning Center lecture series on Math 1240 Quantitative Methods of Business. This is Brandon Stevens coming at you with today's topic, which is chapter 12 of this course on decision making, which is ironic because half the time I am incapable of making decisions. But hopefully by the end of this video, I and hopefully you will have some more tips and tricks on how to handle that decision making process. Now, of course, this is a business class, so we're focusing mostly on business decisions. You can probably relate it to your life somehow. Um, but in this scenario, we're going to assume that we are a business that has multiple different projects that we are considering of undertaking. And we want to know which of these projects in the end is going to be the most beneficial for the company. In other words, make us the most money. So in this scenario, I always turn to food. Um, we have three different types of restaurants that we're going to try and undertake. We could go for a dessert shop. Uh, we could go for a hot chicken restaurant. Or we could go for a grilled cheese restaurant. Now, of course, without having actually built these things and like seen how much we sold, we don't know how much we're going to actually make from these business ventures. But we can use what we know about what the public is looking for and what the background of society is at the time to try and uh, estimate how much we plan on making. Um, so the problem with that is we don't know how the public is going to be thinking at the time. They could be looking for something sweet or they could be looking for something spicy or they could be looking for something cheesy. We don't know what that's going to be, but whatever it's going to be is going to influence how much we are going to actually be making with our business venture. For example, if they want sweet things, it is better to go for a dessert shop than a hot chicken restaurant, for example. So the sweet, spicy, and cheesy, we refer to as states of nature. It's kind of the setting for which our um, business decision is taking place. So in this case, it's kind of like, what is society hungry for? In other, um, in other problems, it might be, what is the financial situation at the time? What's the government regulations at the time? And maybe that will have an impact on how our business decision goes. Um, so this whole table with the different payoffs in it um, the different profits that we could see based off of the state of nature and which business decision we choose, we call a payoff table. Very apt name, it is a table full of payoffs. So for example, if we went with hot chicken and it turned out that the public wanted something spicy, we could stand to make $80,000. All of these are in thousands of dollars. Um, but let's say they wanted something cheesy instead, and we had still gone with hot chicken, we stand to lose $20,000 on our venture. Um, but if we had gone grilled cheese and the public wanted cheesy, then we make $50,000. So basically each dollar amount is for that business decision in that state of nature. Now, another issue we run across often is we don't know the likelihood that these states of nature are going to occur. We just know that they have a possibility of occurring. So in this video, we're gonna see what happens when we don't know those probabilities. How are we supposed to use this information to make these decisions? In the following video, we'll look and see what happens when we actually have that information, when we have a good idea of the likelihood of these occurrences. So when we don't have those probabilities, there are five criterion that I like to look at. Um, four of which will involve this, one of which will involve this, but we'll get to that uh, later. So the first criterion we're going to look at is the maxi-max criterion. And several of these are going to have that same kind of feel to it. You've got kind of two different parts here. You've got a max and a max. And so in this case, it literally reads out like that. It is the maximum of the maximum payoffs. Maximum of the maximum payoffs. And so in this case, what you're going to be doing is you're going to say, okay, let's say we go with the dessert shop. What's the biggest 
profit we could see from our dessert shop. 60, 20, 40, it's got to be 60 in the sweet category, in the sweet state of nature. So in that case, I'm going to say that desserts, we stand to make $60,000 on it. Now we jump over to hot chicken. If we end up going with hot chicken, what's the best case scenario? So we could either have 10,000 or 80,000 or negative 20,000. Obviously, 80,000 in the spicy state of nature is going to be our best bet. So we're hoping that we'll make that. Now our last criteria, or our last business decision, the grilled cheese, we look at the biggest number here, which turns out to be the 50, the $50,000. So we could make $50,000 under this criteria. And so we've got 60, 80, 50. We want the biggest payoff because we have a max here. So maximum of the maximums in that case. We want to go with the hot chicken restaurant for 80000 This one's commonly referred to as the most optimistic because we're talking about the best case scenario in all of these. And then what's the best case scenario of those best case scenarios? So now let's flip it with the maxi min criteria. In this case, the maximum of the minimum. Just like this one is the most optimistic outlook, this one is going to be the most pessimistic outlook. As we're saying, what is the worst case scenario for desserts? Well, for desserts, we can make 60, 20, 40. Worst case scenario, we're still pulling a profit of $20,000. We go for hot chicken. We could have 10, 80, or negative 20. Worst case scenario, it's actually really bad. We're losing $20,000. And then grilled cheese. We're going to have 30, 10, and 50. Again, worst case scenario, we're only making $10,000. These are profits. We want to see big profits. So max in. We want the dessert shop in that case. Worst case scenario in each of these, the best worst case scenario is the dessert shop. Boom, two down, three to go. The next one I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna skip over what the third one is in the book because I don't wanna go into that yet, uh, is the Herwicks criteria. Really hard to say, Herwicks criteria. And I'll erase that first. The Herwicks criteria, and remember this is the most optimistic, this is the most pessimistic, this meets somewhere in the middle. We're not completely optimistic. We're not completely pessimistic. So this one, it's going to be a little more formula heavy um, because it's going to involve having an alpha value. In this case, we'll just choose 0.5. It's anywhere between 0 and 1. And what this alpha value is, is a coefficient of optimism. It's basically, how optimistic do I want to be? If that alpha value is closer to 1, the more optimistic I get, and if it is 1, I'm actually just doing the maxi max criterion. If alpha is closer to 0, the more pessimistic I am until I eventually get to the maxi min criterion. And so in the middle, what we're going to do is we are going to take the best case scenario of the row. So in this case, we're going to start with desserts, just like normal. We find the best case scenario, which is the 60. We take that times the alpha value, times our coefficient of optimism, so 0.5. And we add to that the worst case scenario, which in this case is 20, times 1 minus 0.5. This 1 minus 0.5, 1 minus whatever alpha is, that's going to be our coefficient of pessimism. How pessimistic are we? And so in this case, we're going to have 30 plus 10, that's going to be $40,000. $40, now, of course, this is not saying that we are going to make $40,000 with this venture. It is just a way of incorporating both the best case and worst case scenarios. It's kind of like an average kind of thing. On average, we're making around 40. Uh, but let's keep going. So now we do the same thing with the hot chicken. We take the best case scenario times our alpha 
and we take the worst case scenario, the negative 20, and we take it times 1 minus alpha. And so in this case, 40 minus 10, it's going to give us $30,000. Finally, of course, is the grilled cheese. Best case is 50, worst case is 10. So we have 50 times 0.5, and we've got 10 times 1 minus 0.5. And that gives us also 30. And so we pick the largest of them because these are still payoffs. The worst, the best case in this would be the dessert shop. Okay, three down. The next one is going to account for even more information. So the first two kind of looked at only one piece of it. Now, Hurwitz looked at two. This one's going to incorporate all three. And it is called the equal likelihood criterion. And it's very similar. It, it basically is the concept of expected value that you covered in the last chapter. Uh, basically, what we do is we say each state of nature has an equal likelihood of happening. So since there are three states of nature, each has a probability of one-third of happening. If there were four of them, it'd be one-fourth. If there were only two, it'd be one-half. Get the picture. And so then we do an expected value problem with those probabilities. So for the dessert, we take the 60 times the probability of getting 60, which is one-third. 20 times the probability of getting it, which is one-third and 40 times the probability of getting it, which is one-third. And that ends up giving us $40,000. Now there's actually a trick to this. Instead of doing the one-third, 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 an easier way, or at least another way of looking at it, is just averaging the different payoffs for that um, business venture. So for hot chicken, we could just take 10 plus 80, minus 20 divided by three. And that's gonna give us 23, nope, 23. Point three, 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 and again, we're looking at the best of these, which does happen to be the desserts at 40. That is the best case scenario. Again, this is not saying that we are going to get $40,000 from undertaking this business venture. It is saying, on average, we're going to make $40,000. It's just another way of comparing these three business ventures using all of the information to an extent. Okay, now the last one. We finally get to use this other table that's just been sitting here. And that criterion is called the Minimax Regret. So it's more similar to those first two, but since we have used it in the chart, I wanted to put it last because it's got those two different parts, the min, max. So in this case, it is the minimum of the maximum regrets. So first we have to figure out what, what do I mean by regret? Well, regret is saying how sad we are with the decision that we make. So let's say we end up making the dessert shop because desserts are yummy. Um, but let's say the public disagrees and they actually wanted something spicy. Well, in that case, we should have made the hot chicken restaurant. That would have been the better business venture according to that state of nature. We missed out on $60,000. 60000 would be our regret in that case. But of course, if we had gone dessert and the public actually wanted something sweet, that is the best case scenario. We don't regret making our decision. So, the way I like to create this regret table is go down the columns. Figure out what the best one in the column is, and then 
take that number and subtract what is already in that cell. So in this case, dessert, we, the biggest for sweet is 60. This cell has 60. 60 minus 60 is zero. In the hot chicken place, the biggest number in that column is 60 because we should have gone with desserts. We missed out on 60 minus 10, which is $50,000. And same thing with grilled cheese. We should have gone with dessert. We missed out on 30,000, which is 60 minus 30. And then you can go to the spicy column and ignore the sweet column and ignore the cheesy column. So we already did this one because it was 80 minus 20. This one gives you 80 minus 80. We didn't regret our choice. And then we got 80 minus 10, which gives you $70. Okay, in the cheesy column, we should go with the grilled cheese. We only missed out on 10,000 here. We actually missed out on 50 minus negative 20 is $70,000. And then we made the right decision in that case. And so now, now that our regret table has been created, now we just figure out the maximum of those regrets. So for dessert, the biggest regret is if it turned out to be spicy and we lost out on $60,000. Now let's say we went with hot chicken instead. The biggest regret is if the public wanted something cheesy. We miss out on $70,000. And then let's say we've got grilled cheese. I'm gonna write it over here because I'm slanting a lot. <laughs> grilled cheese. Worst case scenario is if it was actually spicy. We missed out on $70,000. And now in this case, we are actually wanting the smallest one because we don't want to regret our choice. In this case, desserts for 60 is the smallest, it is the best choice under this criteria. And so notice desserts, I think one three and hot chicken one two, that doesn't necessarily mean desserts is the one to go with. It's still under the company's jurisdiction to say, which of these criterion do they trust the most? Or maybe they just want to make a hot chicken restaurant. Who knows? So really, it's personal preference on do you go for desserts? Do you go for hot chicken? If your goal is profit, you're probably not going to grilled cheese. Um, it does do the best for cheesy, but it doesn't do that much better than the dessert shop. But again, that's company preference. It kind of goes um, with that. Just back to basic decision making. But in this case, we've shown kind of dessert and hot chicken are the two main contenders if you're looking for more profit. Now, one thing to also look out for, let's say instead of 50, that this one was 30. Now notice in each scenario, desserts beats grilled cheese. In that case, we called the grilled cheese decision dominated by the dessert one. Because in any case, Desserts is a better choice than grilled cheese, unless you're just really hungry for a grilled cheese. Um, even though it didn't win, it technically wasn't dominated since there's still a state of nature where it does win. Uh, but that is another tool in your tool bet to kind of look through, because if a business venture is dominated, you can ignore it. So you don't even have to include the calculations for it at all, because you know it is dominant. And there we go. There is the five criterion to look at if you do not have the probabilities. Uh, and then catch me in a second to look at what happens when we do have more information, when we know the likelihood of those three states of nature occurring. Let's do it.